On the Star Wars comic subreddit, I recently saw a discussion of the very first prequel-era story told in the Expanded Universe. The 24th issue of the original Star Wars comic run is all about Obi-Wan Kenobi, but it was released in 1979. I read it for the first time because I thought it would be fun to take a look at what writers and illustrators imagined the Age of the Republic and the Jedi Knights to be when they had almost nothing to go on. And I think they mostly pull it off by keeping things very vague. The story is pretty isolated, taking place on a pleasure yacht. Obi-Wan is hitching a ride because it happens to be headed to his destination on Alderaan. But still, some things had to be defined, like Obi-Wan's outfit, which is like Nick Fury's original costume. His demeanor seems to be based mostly on the cantina scene from A New Hope. We even get kind of a repeat of that scene where someone at a bar threatens his companion, and then he defends himself with his lightsaber except he straight up kills the dude this time. The general perception of the Jedi at this point is also pretty interesting. Like, they're still a known group, but I definitely get the sense each knight is more individual. Like they're wandering warrior monks that just do what they want. They don't seem to be understood as a group. For example, a criminal straight up asks Obi-Wan if he wants to partner up with him in his evil dealings, and it's hard to imagine anyone doing that with a straight face now. Except for maybe like Hondo, but even he probably wouldn't expect that to actually work. As for the regular citizens, the Jedi do seem to have a reputation as generals, pulling that from Leia calling him General Kenobi in A New Hope. When the yacht falls under attack, the captain requests Obi-Wan take charge as a military commander. The rest of the passengers don't seem to fully trust the Jedi either, which I think is a happy accident that lines up with the Clone Wars well, but probably for different reasons. In the show, people think the Jedi are out of touch and don't understand what the galaxy is like for regular people. In the comic, I think it more comes from the mystery surrounding Obi-Wan. People have heard of Jedi Knights, but don't seem to know what they're all about. Also, he had just killed a dude. Granted, it was in self-defense, but still. I think it's interesting we still see anti-droid sentiments in the comic. Like, obviously, the writer was just taking what little we knew about the galaxy in A New Hope and expanded on it. Can't fault them for that, but now we know the anti-droid feelings more came from battle droids and the droid armies of the Clone Wars. In this comic, it just seems like some people don't like droids, and it gives Obi-Wan an easy stance on which to take the moral high ground, pun intended. This whole story is being told by Leia, who heard it from her father, who is named Bale in the comic. I think it's cool that name was already floating around. But something funny I saw on Wikipedia looking for more information about the comic is that in the letter to the editor section for this issue, a writer criticized the series as a whole for treating Luke and Leia more like siblings than love interests, and that's just hilarious. But yeah, this was a fun, if not kind of wacky read, and an interesting look at the Republic era back when there was almost nothing to inform what it should look or feel like. You can find this on Marvel Unlimited if you want to read it for yourself. But that's it for today. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.